All right, so now we can move on to the start of today's notes, which is atomic radius. So this, in fact, is, in, is going to be our last principle that we're going to talk about in terms of periodic trends. So this is actually the most straightforward, so sometimes it's nice to end with the easiest concept, and that's what we're doing here. And if we're talking about atomic radius, essentially we're talking about atomic size. Uh, and immediately it should probably come into your head that we don't actually have an atomic radius that we can talk about, right? What I just spent many lectures discussing is the fact that we cannot know how far away an electron is from the nucleus, so we can't actually know the radius of a certain atom. And that's true. Uh, an atom's not a defined sphere, for example. We can't define it as an exact radius in terms of the definition we might think of classically. Uh, so keep that in mind when we're talking about atomic radius. I'm not suddenly changing my story and saying, yes, we do have a distinct radius. Instead, what people have done is come up with different ways to think about how they can define a radius. And one common way to think about it is to think about the value of r, or the radius, below which 90% of that electron density is going to be contained. So we're not saying it's all the electron density, it's just 90%, because we know as we go to infinity, even though the density gets smaller and smaller and smaller, we still have electron density very far away from the nucleus. So what we're going to define is just, let's just capture 90% of that electron density. So that's one way to think about it. And there's also another way, and this is the way that your book presents it, if you, in fact, have two of the same atom right next to each other, let's say you have a crystal, or let's say you're talking about a metal, what you can do is just look at the distance between the two nuclei and split that in half and take the atomic radius that way. So these are two different definitions of how to think about atomic radius, but really what you find when these are measured is they come up with almost the identical values. So there are tables you can look up of atomic radii and see these values, and you can trust them that, yes, they work for both this definition and for this definition here in most cases. And what we've been talking about with all of these properties are, are of course, how can we figure out what that is for a certain atom by looking at the periodic table. So we want to think about the periodic trend for atomic radius. And we know as we go across a row in the periodic table, what's happening is that Z effective, or the effective pull on the nucleus is increasing. So would you expect, therefore, as we go across a row for the atomic radius to increase or to decrease? Good, okay, yes, we are expecting to see that it decreases because it's feeling a stronger pull. All the electrons are being pulled in closer to the nucleus, so that atomic size is going to get smaller. This is in contrast to what's happening as we go down a periodic table. So as we go down, we're now adding electrons to further and further away shells. So what we're going to see is that the atomic radius is going to increase as we're going down the periodic table. And we can look at an example here. If we start in the upper left-hand corner of the periodic table with lithium, you can see that as we go down the table, what you're seeing is that that atomic radius is actually increasing, as we would expect. Whereas if we go across a row, what we see is that the atomic radius is decreasing. 